Dear Daily News Report viewers, after watching this video, you can reach the video we shared yesterday by clicking on the top right button. The main topic of the yesterday's video was oil crash. We recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. Thanks in advance. How the pandemic is hitting the reset button on the world economy and international cooperation. The Western media, still suspicious of China, have bent over backwards to loud anti-COVID-19 efforts in South Korea, Taiwan and Singapore. But the world's experts must work together to dig us out of this mess, then prepare for the next pandemic. Last September, business leaders and academics across Europe and the United States began calling for a reset. The need for businesses to act more sustainably, to treat their stakeholders more equitably and global warming seriously. They were focusing on ESG, environmental, social and governance factors. Six months later, as an unforeseen global pandemic sweeps grimly across the globe, the calls for a reset have become more urgent than ever. But the reset is also being redefined, and the global recession that is being unleashed by the pandemic has massively compromised our social and economic capacity to move towards even a modest reset. Just when business leaders need to cooperate and apply vision to redefine their roles in society, they have been plunged into an unprecedented struggle to save jobs and fend off bankruptcy. At the same time, just when we urgently need our political leaders to come together and lay the international foundations for this reset, they are being sucked into national emergencies facing their hospital and health systems and the challenge of saving thousands of lives. This crisis may reshuffle the international power structure in ways that may be difficult to imagine. Key decisions, right or wrong, timely or delayed, are being arrived at by respective national governments, as the anguish is felt within the national boundaries. Nearly all nations, developing or developed, are largely combating it independently. The afflicted nations facing the grave havoc have declared national emergencies, displayed greater nationalism and become insular to conditions in other states. As an apparent result, indeed, these trends of extreme nationalism may persist for some time. However, multilateralism and regionalism may come more on the center stage. An example being SAARC given a new lease of life. COVID-19 has indicated that a global challenge unseen and unimagined previously does not distinguish between nations, religions, caste or creed. It may dawn on the wisdom of many a nation on the futility of conflictual political that bound and may direct energies towards solutions to long-drawn geopolitical animosities. There is the issue of economic recovery, globalization was already under test and slow globalization was being predicted as inevitable. Despite globalization already under strain, the logic prevailing per virus was still that we are also witnessing the decline of the nation-state. The processes of globalization had eroded the traditional power that a state had over its boundaries. The proliferation of this virus that emanated from Wuhan has proven that the world was strongly interconnected and interdependent. The pandemic hence will strengthen the state and reinforce nationalism, governments of all types adopting emergency measures to manage the crisis will be reluctant to relinquish these controls when the crisis is over. And the nation seems to be on an even the keel. Maybe COVID-19 will become an opportunity to rethink the method of rebuilding and reshaping the economies, one that will be fundamentally different than the one in Vosges. As national economies look inwards, see 
selective self-sufficiencies, and if nationalism takes stronger roots, nations like China based upon manufacturing and export-oriented trade will feel the immense strain. Whatever facilities or bailouts the private sector will receive must include explicit conditions that include retaining jobs and collaboration is overcoming the current crisis. Nobel laureate Edmund Phelps and economist Roman Friedman argued in a recent column where they used the concept of systematic insurance. Governments must guarantee the production of medical equipment of essential goods and service, that people can access said goods and services, and that they can cover their financial obligations. Thus, government spending must be increased dramatically and consistently until a recovery is emerging. And it must be done with clarity, speed and uniformity, as another FD columnist, Gillian Tett, recently argued. This has not been the case in Argentina, for example, where the government's piecemeal approach to averting the implosion of the private sector has not generated the funding conditions to avoid a total collapse of payments. Argentina's fiscal stimulus plan is estimated by the IMF at less than 2%, which seems to make sense in the context of a bankrupt state in the middle of debt negotiations with private creditors. Yet, even if deeper deficit derail economy minister Martin Guzman's restructuring plans, they are necessary in order to maintain jobs, which is the only way to limit the negative impact on any future recovery. Mass bankruptcies will result in a loss of jobs in an already destroyed economic situation for individuals and businesses, meaning it will exacerbate the aforementioned vicious cycle. At this juncture, it is not really clear where the funds to pay for a massive stimulus package will come from, but they need to be injected even if it means printing even more money. Small, medium and large companies have already begun to default on their providers while struggling to pay their employees. The central bank needs to guarantee low interest credit lines for the private sector to pay rates while the government must ensure those in the informal sector are covered throughout the help emergency, and all of this must be reverted the day the economy begins rolling. It is time for Alberto Fernandez and the rest of the global leadership to stand up and deliver forceful action that will avert the coming economic collapse. The window of opportunity is shrinking quickly. Instead, the priority must be to let experts, whether medical or economic, work closely together to dig us out of this mess as quickly and with as few casualties as possible. New institutions will need to be built, global institutions that take lessons learned from COVID-19 and use them to make sure we are better prepared when the next pandemic comes. The post-COVID reset is likely to involve more big government than many libertarians would like. It is going to need higher levels of latency in our just-in-time supply chains. It is going to need better funded healthcare systems and health security plans that mirror today's food security arrangements. And new social contracts need to be built that involve less extreme inequality. This will doubtless be the task of decades but in the meantime, let them focus on lives and livelihoods. Most of idea, comment, information and criticism containing in these videos have been created by Daily News Report. Before making any important investment decision, use the information contained in these videos as a starting point for conducting your own research. If you make any investment or legal decision, it is wise to consult an expert before making this decision.